there's not just another shooter drop, Scott and Adam, at, at the Walk Off Podcast. There's not just another shooter drop. There's a massive another shooter drop from this trade. Okay, so we are uh, just under a month into this off season, and still not a lot has happened, man. I mean, yeah. all the major free agents, minus minus some relievers. You know, there were some big relievers to go, but minus the relievers, not a lot has happened yet. And I'm starting to feel like we probably still got to wait till these winter meetings in a week, eh? Are, are you kind of getting the same impression here? You know, what's funny is a year ago from right now, we were all devastated because it didn't even look like there would be baseball. So I think that that experience has has, has taken us out of the what what, what the norm has become right. in baseball for agency. Remember, 2019, 2020, 2021, by the time players went to spring training, you could make an all-star team of the guys still available. You could make an all-star yeah. team of the guys still available. And that's when spring training started. So I think it's getting back to a little bit more normal. But yes, uh, it, it, especially if we don't see dominoes fall at the winter meetings, everybody's sitting right there in the darn room. You're all sitting in the same hotel. Like wheeling and dealing is, gets done. So that is the next thing I, I'm really looking forward to. I'm looking forward to this Veterans Committee to see who gets into the Hall of Fame. I'm looking forward to these uh, winter meetings as well. Yeah, last year was weird because it was such a feast or famine, right? Because they had that deadline before the lockout. And then there was like all that action in early December. Yeah. And we're like, oh, my God. And then all of a sudden, you know, the lockout hits and then it's just famine for months. So yeah. at least we're not dealing with a lockout. So my dude, everyone has talked to Oscar Hernandez trade to death, right? But without a corresponding move to this trade, there's still... A lot of uncertainty as to what exactly is happening, what direction this front off is going in. And it has made fans, uh, for lack of a better word, pretty <laughs> squirrely, I think is the right term. Very and well I, know, I know a lot of people are upset with this return, which I think honestly goes to show uh, you that the, the market on a power bat on one year left over 10 million owing for a slightly below defensive outfielder, it's just not as high as maybe some people would hope it would be. And I think Hunter Renfro is a good comparable here. Ooh. If you look at the Brewers, right? Very similar money, very similar profile. I think Teoscar is a better player, but marginally, but the better return was on the Blue Jays. But I loved your take on this trade, you know, because you truly, when you put out your video there on TikTok and Twitter, um, it was very much a glass half full kind of outlook. And I'd love for you to just kind of regurgitate your, your thoughts on this trade, if you will. Yeah. And you're right. A, a squirrely is, is yeah. The, the, the fan base. Absolutely. <laughs> I hear it. What I would really recommend to as many fan base or many people in the fan base that, that, that can do this. Uh, it's, it's not fun. It's not enjoyable. It's not sexy. It's not what a fan wants to do but you have to bring the business aspect in. That's what I find missing the most. You just laid out the business aspect of it. It's a big deal. We're upwards of two years. Could we make the argument three years? Or if a tail re-up was coming, they had a massive window to discuss it. And as far as we see, it was never even discussed. So tail or Lourdes being moved was going to happen. Absolutely, yes. What were you going to get back for the return? You just said it. That's a one-year rental. Teo has never made, I think it was you actually, Scott, yesterday on the long toss that was making the point that, uh, you know, Teo probably wants to hit free agency. He's not, or might, might have been, somebody was saying he's never mm. made the huge money. He'll want to see what's out there for him in free agency. So even the, the team that you're trading him to really has their mind wrapped around that this is probably a one year rental. So the return assets coming back are going to be tempered. They're going to be for that one year rental. The specific return assets coming back, though, that, that uh, left-handed pitcher, uh, Mako, he slides right into the Blue Jays' top 10 prospects. That, I'm not sneezing mm -hmm. at that. A lefty who's, de who's developed pitches as he's come up through the system. When he walked in the door, when he was drafted, his curveball was his calling card. He had a major league-ready curveball at 18 years old. When he came in the minors... Which is he, so rare. Which yes. is so rare. Yeah. And he, yeah, and he walked in the minors, thrown in, in about the high, nine, uh, high 80s. That came into the high 90s. He's sitting at 97 right now. Like, we are seeing mm -hmm. this guy develop right before I said 21 years old. This is a yes, please. And then, of course, the actual bullpen piece coming back, who, who I, I, I very much like. How much talk is, has there been about swing and miss? This guy's a swing and miss guy. You add him with 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 a bass at the back of the the bullpen to set up a Romano. Now you have several swing and miss guys. I'm huge on who Zach Pop is going to be for this Blue Jay team going forward. I, mm -hmm. I say... I take your bass strikeout to get one out. I take that and I'll, I'll see that and I'll call that and I'll raise you 
a Zach Pop. Bass, to get that strikeout, is what, three, four, five, six, seven pitches? Pop, to get that double play, that's one pitch and two outs. So I'll take that strikeout pitcher, and I'll raise you a Zach Pop for importance going forward. But but it, uh, as far as the, the uh, Ateo trade in particular, I did think it was a good return haul, and I absolutely think that it, it was to set up more to come. Yes, the... The the um uh, the, the Gritches trade last year, Gritches for Tapia, that was a house cleaning move. It freed up about five million for this year. This move yeah. frees up about fourteen million. Now you're up to about twenty million, and it's not uh, this isn't um a Pittsburgh well Pittsburgh's buyers now, but uh, like a Kansas City. This isn't a, a seller move at all. It decreases the payroll, yes, but it doesn't decrease the payroll because they want to contribute to Rogers to the owner's bottom line. It decreases the payroll because they want a little bit more flexibility. Because for the fourth off season in a row. Ryu Springer Gosman for the fourth off season in a row. I think the Toronto Blue Jays are going big game hunting. So this trade here, I like what it brings in the short term. Yes, but absolutely. There's, as you've mentioned, there's, there's not just another shoot a drop, Scott and Adam at, at the walk off podcast. There's not just another shoot a drop. There's a massive another shoot a drop from this trade. And I really love hearing that. And I think you are on to something here. I mean, the, the, the money total, if you can even add another 5 million without writing Tapia and releasing Bradley Zimmer. Right. So yeah. yes, there are holes to fill, but there is money to play with here. We really appreciate all of you within the walk-off community. This thing continues to grow and become an animal of its own. It's a little bit overwhelming, but honestly, we love talking Blue Jays baseball and all the interaction that you folks are involved with us. Thank you so much. Discord, feel free to join it. That is always free. The show, our, uh, the link is in the show notes. You can follow us on Twitter at Walk Off Podcast, on Instagram, the Walk Off Podcast. And if you are watching on YouTube currently and you're not subscribed, We'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button. All the best, everybody. Cheers.